Okay, welcome fourth graders to another voice thread. Uh, we are discussing um, chapter five, chapter six, lesson two. And this is a uh, lesson is called the effects of gold rush. We just finished talking about the gold rush and what had happened. Now we're gonna be talking about the effects of the gold rush on the economy, on the people, on jobs and that sort of thing. Uh, on page 227, you'll notice the uh, title there. It says, Settlements Grow and Change. Now, the discovery of gold in California set off one of the largest movements of people in history. Uh, in just a few years, San Francisco changed from a town of about 800 to a city of 35,000. Ships entered and left San Francisco by the thousands. Sacramento uh, grew quickly and so did Stockton and Marysville. They became trading and supply centers for the mining camps in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. Other towns that had been mining camps just months ago were now, uh, had now had banks, food stores, and doctor's offices, okay? What basically had happened is that many of these miners gave up their dreams of finding gold and they became entrepreneurs they started their own businesses so in these mining camps you would have a few miners who were like you know what i'm not going to find gold but i know what i know these miners need food so they would open up a food store or these miners are going to need somewhere to keep their money they would open up a bank and so these little cities started to form uh, in place of these small mining camps. Looking on page 238, in continuing kind of this discussion of the economy, um, the, gold, the gold rush definitely made some people in California uh, rich. While many workers mined gold, like I mentioned earlier, others started businesses. They provided goods and services to the miners and other consumers. A consumer is a person who buys a good or services. There were carpenters who needed to build houses and buildings. Merchants sold supplies. Town needed police officers, bankers, grocers, blacksmiths, and other workers. Many entrepreneurs became wealthy selling goods and services to the miners. Uh, what ba and another problem that kind of started to happen is that there were so many people that came to California in such a short time that there was a shortage of goods and services. There simply were not enough stuff to um, because many people came to California with basically just what they could carry with their hands. Well, after a while, they needed a place to stay, they needed clothes, they needed food. But with so many people coming, there's, there just wasn't enough food, there wasn't enough clothes, there wasn't enough wood, there wasn't enough things in order to support all of these people coming to California. So there was a shortage. Uh, now, when you have a shortage of something, uh, it causes inflation or a sharp increase in prices. The reason is is because if there is not a lot of something, but everybody wants that something, the price is gonna be really high. Um, let's say we were all taking a test and there was only one pencil, but you had to take this test in order to graduate from fifth grade or fourth grade, a lot of people would be trying to buy that pencil, wouldn't they? Because there's only one of them and you really need it, it's in high demand. So the cost of that pencil is going to be really expensive. That's called inflation. So this started to happen uh, during the California gold rush. Uh, let's make sure I uh, move on with the pictures here. You can see um, this is an example of some entrepreneurs who started their own businesses to uh, support the miners. You see tinsmiths and bankers. And you can see here, this is a picture of inflation. Uh, because there was not a lot of soap, the cost of soap, and this is kind of, uh, this cartoon's just supposed to be funny, but the cost of soap became almost as much as gold. 
these miners were having to send their clothes uh, outside of California in order to get them cleaned. And that cost a lot of money. So if you had soap, it was worth a lot of money, almost more than the gold itself. Okay, new opportunities started to happen, obviously, because of the gold rush. I've already mentioned quite a few of them. Uh, despite the high cost of living in California, because everybody wanted to come here, many people still saw it as a place of freedom and opportunity. The gold rush economy in California meant that some people had, had opportunities that were not available to them in other places. Many women opened hotels, restaurants, and laundries. Uh, many free African Americans saw this place as uh, as a place of opportunity and freedom. Uh, there was this gentleman named Mifflin Gibbs who was an entrepreneur who opened a shoe store in San Francisco during the gold rush. Many um, African Americans who were free who made money would use their money to buy uh, the freedom of enslaved Africans. So they would basically set uh, them free. Uh, now, damage to the land. Uh, when the miners first got here, there were no rural laws or rules governing how they could mine. So they would just tear up the land. Um, as gold became harder to find, mi miners often tore up land or built dams to change the flow of rivers. This killed fish and kept the water from reaching farms and towns downstream. So it was real devastating to the economy and to the countryside and to the nature and to the animals that live there. But in 1884, lawmakers in California put up some better laws to uh, stop some of the more dangerous mining methods. Okay, I am on now uh, 242, a changing population. People of nearly every race, religion, or background came to California uh, during the gold rush. Immigrants from around the world came to California with different customs, languages, and cultures. Many people learned to get along with people from other groups, but sometimes there were conflicts. With so many people coming from with different languages and cultures, some people got along, but some people did not. For example, Chinese and Mexican immigrants, California Indians, African Americans, Californios, and other groups faced discrimination. Discrimination is the unfair treatment of people because of their religion, their race, or their birthplace. Uh, California Indians were especially hurt by the gold rush in many other ways. They were forced off their lands when the miners found gold there. Miners also cut down forests and destroyed rivers and streams where many of the American Native Americans went to get their food uh, and where they hunted. In the early days of the gold rush, violence and crime were common. Because there were few government officials, some people decided to become vigilantes to enforce the laws. A vigilante is a person who takes the law into his or her own hands. So it's like, hey, there's no police officer here. I'm going to take the law into my own hands. So if that person harms me, instead of calling the cops, I'm just going to go get them myself. Because they did not follow the rules of law, in some cases, vigilantes punished people who had done nothing wrong. Okay? Okay. Here's some vocabulary you're going to need to know. An entrepreneur is a person who sets up a new business. Inflation is a sharp increase in prices. And discrimination is the unfair treatment of people because of their religion, their race, or their birthplace. Two questions that you're going to need to answer for this voice thread. Uh, the first one is on page 237. How was San Francisco different after the gold rush? And question two on page 239, 
how did the economy of California change during the gold rush? Answer those two questions. Feel free to leave to uh, leave any additional comments or questions for myself or your other classmates to answer and to discuss. I hope you've enjoyed this voice thread. Look forward to seeing you at school.